Grace. I don't think the average man thinks about grace all that much. In fact, on average, most people are pretty apathetic to their need for the grace of God. That is, we're apathetic until we find ourselves in such a desperate situation that the only solution is grace. Then suddenly, grace becomes the most sought after commodity in the entire world. As long as we can skate by in life without suffering any consequences for our bad attitudes, words, and behaviors, there are a lot of us who are happy to do just as we please. Have you ever wondered why people feel like they can be rude on the telephone when they wouldn't be rude in real life? I know I've been guilty of it. You know, you get a phone call from a bill collector and you just let him have it with both guns blazing. You know, most of us would never do that in person. Well, why not? Because there are no consequences for rude phone behavior. The teacher's not going to reach through the phone and slap us in the face for bad-mouthing a salesperson. Because the representative is not physically present and there aren't any phone cops around, we blast them with our verbal bazookas. Well, that's sort of the same with God. We can't see him. He hasn't come through the phone to penalize us for our bad, sinful behavior. So we don't even worry about grace until we need it. And one day we will need it. One day we will meet God face to face on Judgment Day. And at that point, every one of us will need grace. Why? Well, let's imagine you have a six-year-old son whom you love dearly. Tragically, one day you discover that your son was horribly murdered. Oh, forbid the thought. After a lengthy search, the investigators find the killer. And now you, you're faced with a choice. If you used every means in your power to kill the murderer for his crime, that would be revenge. If, however, you're content to sit back and let the legal authorities take over and execute on him what is proper, a fair trial, a plea of guilty, capital punishment, that would be justice. But if you should plead for the pardon of the murderer, forgive him completely and invite him into your home and adopt him as your own son, who would do that? Well, that's grace. See, that's what God does for us. God not only forgives us for our bad, sinful behavior, for the sins that caused the death of his son, Jesus, but he invites us into his family. Amazing grace. Do you see why grace is so hard to grasp and so difficult to accept? Very few people would happily and readily do what Jesus did. But God does it every day. He takes the lost sinner who says, I'm unworthy, guilty as charged. I hurt your son, Jesus. I'm undeserving of forgiveness. And God offers the gift of eternal life because Christ's death on the cross satisfied his demands against sin. That's grace. God's grace is absolutely free. Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Did you catch the brief statement of hope in that verse? And you, he made alive. You, he gave eternal life. You know, that's the happy ending to the story of our sad little lives. It's a, a glimmer of hope in a graceless world. I want you to notice that God rightly diagnoses that our world is, is graceless and in trouble. And because it's graceless, it is hopeless. But because it's hopeless, Jesus died for our sins. God offers us grace. That's my Jesus, and that's why grace is so amazing. Hey, this is Pastor Dennis. Thanks for watching my five-minute message. See you next time.